small amount. Well, um, hopefully I'll try to make this uh, uh, enjoyable even for the people who don't have Blackberries. Okay, so today's talk is going to be about social engineering. Now I know what it says in the agenda, and I know what you guys have been expecting, um, but the more I thought about it, the more I developed this talk, it made more sense for me to actually base it on social engineering so that you guys can actually take something useful from it rather than me coming up here and telling you about uh, you know just doing a demo and then running off. So don't all of you decide to get up and leave at the same time. If you must leave, do it quietly when my back is turned because I'm very sensitive and I take things personally. All right? So social engineering. Um, I'd like to talk to you. I mean, you guys in the security industry uh, probably know social engineering as the hack that works every time. Uh, I saw a TED talk recently given by a British journalist, Misha Glenny, where he gives the technical term for social engineering as there's one born every minute. Um, this is apt because essentially what you're doing with social engineering is that you're taking advantage of somebody's trust, somebody's inherent human trust. Uh, you're taking advantage of that, you're manipulating him, and you're making him do things, or uh, making him reveal information that you would want. So what has this got to do with a BlackBerry, or any device for that matter? Well, it's simple. Uh, no matter how secure a device that you have, there's always an opportunity that you're going to get owned. Uh, I think that's a statement worth repeating. No matter how secure a device you have, there's always a chance that you're going to get owned. How? Through social engineering. And why should you care? Because of your personal information, your personal data. If you guys just Excuse me, I'll give the people a chance to settle down before I continue. <coughs> okay, all settled in. All right, so again, social engineering, um, the hack that works every time, there's always a chance that you can get owned. Um, why should you care? Because of your personal data. Now, if you're like me, I like to keep my personal data personal, private. I don't want to share that with anybody. So uh, I'm going to tell you a little story about something that happened to me uh, early in September. Um, I was flying to Singapore for the day to meet with a friend and to sort out some uh, paperwork that I had. It was just a day trip. I would go in the morning and come back in the evening. Um, as is customary, when I fly, I take along um, my leather jacket with me because I get cold in the flight. So this time is no exception. Flew to Singapore, met with my friend, sorted out the paperwork, and was getting ready to come back to uh, come back home when uh, I stopped at the at one of the cafes in Singapore Airport. Um, I had a bit of time left uh, to be able to grab a quick coffee, so I did that. Slung my jacket over the chair, got up, went uh, to the counter, paid for my coffee and donut, and I came back to my table. Um, when I came back to my table, I noticed my jacket was gone. So stopped for a bit, looked around, uh, couldn't find my jacket. I was at the right table, but I couldn't find my jacket. So I got this feeling like what you get when you go on a roller coaster or when you hit some turbulence on an aircraft, like my stomach was in one place and uh, my body was somewhere else. So I uh, frantically looked around, hoping to find somebody who had actually taken my uh, um, jacket maybe by mistake or maybe on purpose. And 
couldn't find anyone. So by now, the feeling in my stomach had actually made its way up to my head, and I had this monster headache. Uh, not because I lost an expensive jacket. It was a really nice jacket, and I missed that jacket. Uh, also not because I lost a $700 BlackBerry phone. No. The reason I had this monster headache was because um, all my personal data was on the BlackBerry. I mean, my entire life was on this BlackBerry. My contacts, my email, my SMS, uh, the high scores to Brick Breaker and Sudoku, everything. Everything was on that and it had disappeared. Uh, so I looked around as much as I could, didn't have any luck, and I had to abandon the search that day and just go home because uh, I had to catch my flight. So if anyone of, any one of you have ever experienced this, I think you should count yourselves lucky, as unfortunate as that may sound, because you can use this feeling to protect yourself in the future. I mean, for me personally, I'll never let this happen ever again to me because of this feeling. I constantly think back to this feeling that I had, the feeling that I get when I know that somebody else has access to my personal information. Somebody out there is able to read my personal information. So you guys should consider yourselves lucky if you've ever experienced something like this. So um, what does this have to do with Blackberries anyway? Uh, as technology improves and becomes better and better, these phones that we use today are becoming more powerful, becoming much smaller. Uh, technology drives this evolution. And the Blackberries or the mobile devices these days can shoulder a lot of the burden of some of the tasks that we do on uh, our laptops. For example, I have a primary set of tasks that I do on my laptop. For example, I do my research, conduct pen tests, uh, write reports, write white papers, all on my PC. And then I have a secondary set of tasks which I do, which involve browsing the internet, checking my mail, communicating with uh, colleagues and friends using IM. Now, my BlackBerry can do all of these secondary tasks with ease. It's uh, not a big deal. I don't have to break out my laptop wherever I go. I can just check everything uh, on my BlackBerry, check my email, my IM, and I can browse the internet. Although I must say that the BlackBerry has one of the worst or less good internet browsers out there. It, 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 it sucks ass in comparison to the iPhone browser. <laughs> and I can see my boss laughing there because he has an iPhone. Uh, so despite that, I can still use my BlackBerry to uh, do all these secondary tasks. So here are some of the reasons why I selected my BlackBerry, or why I picked the BlackBerry to use. It's got push email. It's got a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, it's got granular security controls, transport level security, and device encryption. Now, since we're at a security conference, I'm not going to dwell too much on the first two. But instead, I'll talk to you about the other three. Granular security controls. So the BlackBerry has a set of permissions very similar to a PC that you would get maybe in Unix or in Windows, uh, a set of permissions that determines how applications will interact with other applications and your data. So using these permissions, I can allow or deny access to my user data. For example, if an application wants to access my email or my contacts, uh, I can either allow it or deny it. Um, I can allow or deny access to for an application to interact with other applications. So for example, if an application wants to talk to my email client or my Maps client, I can either permit that or deny. And